Hi YouTube, it's Patrick, uh, and this is my review of Skyfall, the new James Bond movie. First of all, sorry for the hat. I've uh, been wearing it all day, and I just don't feel like doing the review with uh, hat hair. So anyway, yeah, I just got back from Skyfall, and it was very good. If not a little overrated feeling from all the praise I've heard. I've heard best Bond movie ever, best in, you know, 40 years, and just like, you know, four stars all around from everyone. I thought it was very good, but it had its problems. It wasn't, you know, it, I didn't think it was great. So, that I kind of wish I didn't hear how good it was for um, from everybody. But anyway, as far as it, as far as it goes, the plot was um, nice and simple. There was no uh, there was no stuff from the previous movies from Quantum of Solace or um, or Casino Royale. It was just its own its own thing, and it was just simply about one person trying to target M. That was it. That person's Javier Bardem, uh, who I'll get into in a second. And um, it was nice that it was simple. It wasn't some crazy, overcomplicated plot to take over the world or anything like that. It was just uh, Javier Bardem's character, Silva, just trying to get revenge on M. And it tied into what happened to Bond at the beginning of the film. Uh, which, again, I'm not going to go into plot stuff with this. Um, maybe, I'll, all right, maybe I'll do like a, a little spoiler thing um, after the fact. But... Uh, yeah, so I liked that it was simple, it was straightforward, it had a three-act structure to it, and that ended up being the problem along with the length of the movie. Now, Casino Royale was about two and a half hours, and I just watched Lincoln the other day, which was like two hours and 40 minutes. This movie had three acts. I thought the third act was the weakest. That's never really a good thing. Um, and I felt its length. I was never bored, but I felt its length. By the time I got to the end of it, I was kind of like, all right, you know, let's wrap this up. Which, even though Casino Royale has like a third act that just, you know, maybe feels a little tacked on, it, it didn't it didn't make me feel like the movie was, was that long. This one kind of did. But um, in saying that, you know how you, ever, you hear that uh, the sum is greater than the, you know, than the parts? Um, this movie almost felt like the opposite. All the things that made up this movie... The actors, the director, everyone behind the camera, everything, the music, were all just, just completely top-notch. That when the movie was over, I couldn't help but admire pretty much everything that went into it. Uh, I just didn't, it didn't, you know, strike me as, you know, oh my god, amazing when it was over, much like uh, Casino Royale did. Uh, but as far as what I'm talking about, like the, the great stuff that made it up, first of all... Sam Mendes, the director who directed American Beauty and Road to Perdition. Uh, that's still my favorite movie of his, Road to Perdition. He did Jarhead and Away We Go. And, um, yeah, he was a great choice for it. He was, he knew how to do an action scene, thank God. Unlike, um, Mark Foster on Quantum of Solace, where he just took the camera and shook it at, uh, at what was going on. The movie, the movie still had, it didn't do any over-the-top action scene stuff it had big stunts but that's what they were they were stunts if there was cgi i didn't notice it um but it kept the hand-to-hand -hand combat action of the the first two movies just it didn't make it feel like it was you know a jason bourne film either it, it had a prestige about it that comes from roger deakins who shot the movie and roger deakins is fantastic he's done um you know all the coen brothers stuff and uh he might have done. I don't know if he did the Shawshank Redemption or not. He might have. I'm not sure. That don't hold me on that one. But he's done a lot of Sam Mendes stuff since um, Sam Mendes' first cinematographer died, Conrad Hall. But yeah, he. Uh, th this was the best looking Bond movie in its 50 year history. This was by far the best looking one. Particular one action scene in Shanghai. Actually, everything in this movie um, it was in two places in Shanghai, and then uh, I forget the name of the other place. Uh, it just looked absolutely gorgeous. So all that stuff, plus Thomas Newman's music was very good. And, uh, yeah, so Sam Mendes, great choice. If he wants to stay on and do another one, you know, please, by all means, I, I hope he even makes it better than this one. As far as the acting goes, Daniel Craig, very good. Uh, I thought his performance in Casino Royale was a little bit better. But that's, that's neither here nor there. You know, he's, he, he's James Bond now. And uh, that's all you can really ask from the actor playing Bond, to just be James Bond when we look at him. So uh, very good there. Javier Bardem was a great villain, if not 
underused. I mean, he doesn't come in into the movie until maybe about over an hour, which I loved. He has a great introduction. But then after his introduction, his character just felt kind of... The potential that was there just didn't, didn't feel like it was reached, ultimately. And that wasn't his fault, certainly. Because um, he, was, he was able to make the character feel like an old-school Bond villain, yet not that over-the-top. Uh, they certainly borrowed from some of the Joker, the Dark Knight, and some of the stuff that he does in the movie. But, uh, yeah, still, he was very good. The Bond girls, Naomi Harris was very, very, very good. Uh, I'm not sure what the other girl's name is, but she's very pretty. And uh, she did her job in her, her screen time. Uh, Ray Fiennes, who is just always dependable whenever he's in something, and he was as dependable in this. The best one in the movie actually might have been Judy Dench, to be honest. Well, Javier Redem was probably the best one, but Judy Dench gave her best performance in her seven, in the seven films. And, um... I'll get into the spoiler section of this review shortly. But I'll just say, like I said, all that stuff, everything behind the camera, all the actors, the action scenes, everything is well done when they had a big dramatic moment or a moment that was messed up or something that was funny. All of those moments landed. The theme song by Adele was really, really good. I mean, about a million times better than the... the actually, I thought it was one of the best probably Bond songs that they've done. Uh, so yeah, like I said, you know, definitely go see this because you may you may you may be blown away by it more than I was. I just thought it was very good, uh, but it definitely definitely worth going to see. I didn't see it in IMAX. I was going to see it in IMAX, but you know, ultimately decided against it. Um, but yeah, all right, you know, I'm going to get into a uh, spoiler section of the movie. So if you haven't seen it yet, don't don't keep watching. Uh, otherwise, eight out of ten for Skyfall. Check it out. All right, the spoiler stuff in the film. My biggest problem was Javier Bardem's character. He shows up, and he seems to have this big master plan. You know, he has this great introduction, uh, and then a great scene after that where they put the shot glass on the, uh, the Bond girl's head, and uh, it was just really well done, but then he's caught. And when he's caught... He turns into kind of like a Lecter thing. They have him in a cave. Reminded me of Hannibal Lecter, which was fine. But right from there, it's just clear they just pretty much followed the the Dark Knight route and like you know, oh, he wanted to be escape. He wanted to be caught, so he, it would be easier for him to get to uh, M. But it's this big elaborate plan where all he ends up doing is walking in, you know, to the courthouse, and he wants to shoot her. Like that's it. Like that's all. That's all you're doing. So that was, I thought, just kind of weak and whatever. And then the third act of the movie, I liked that they went into some of Bond's past. It, and I like that Skyfall, you know, that's what Skyfall meant. Um, and we've hinted at some of Bond's past in the previous movies. It just, I don't know, it didn't land, I think, the emotional punch that they were wanting. Like, I was like, okay, we're going to find out some of Bond's, you know, backstory, and that's fine. Albert Finney had a nice little role as um, as the the house caretaker at uh, at Skyfall in Scotland. Clearly, it was supposed to be Sean Connery. I'm sure they probably offered him the role, uh, and he turned it down, so they figured they just went with whoever. But it looked to me they clearly wrote it for Sean Connery, and that would have been nice, but still, what can you do? Uh, but yeah, and the whole third act, you know, again, gorgeously shot and well done, and M being killed off was surprising, I mean, she's been in seven of these. How, how much longer can she go? But it didn't have the, like, the emotional punch I think that they wanted. At least for me, anyway. And it kind of felt anticlimactic. And Silva's death scene was kind of anticlimactic. I get the whole point of using the knife because they were talking about going old school and everything like that. In fact, all the stuff in the movie that was old school was really well done. It was all you know, winking at these things without being tongue-in-cheek, which was pretty good. And, uh... I have faith they're going to move forward, you know, keeping that balance. So, yeah, so I'm definitely still looking forward to the next bunch. But like I said, just very good movie. Just not great, which is a little disappointing because I was hoping for great. But I didn't have the big adrenaline, you know, high that I basically had when uh, Casino Royale was over. I love that movie. Uh, I, mean, I thought it was definitely better than this one. This is certainly an improvement over Quantum of Solace. It's better than all the Brosnan ones because Goldeneye really hasn't aged very well. 
So this one does, you know, belong in, a, in you know the higher section of Bond movies. A lot of the Bond movies really aren't that great, to be honest. I mean, some of the like, I really only like From Russia with Love and Goldfinger. As far as the Connery ones, the Roger Moore ones, I don't really like any of them. Um, the Living Daylights is the um, uh, is one of the Dalton ones that I know is pretty good, and I do like Golden Eye, but uh, you know, it's not like there's. There's been, what, 23 Bond movies. It's not like, you know, 20 of them are, are fantastic. It's really not that ratio. But this one is still very, very, very good. All right, let me know what you thought. And um, have a nice little discussion about it. And, uh, yeah, later.